Hello and welcome to Two Wizards and a Mic, brought to you by Kaywood Publishing. Fine purveyors of all kinds of great st stuff. But there's an announcement. So sit back, relax, and listen to Andrew. Yes. <clears throat> so that's Shane, <clears throat> the brains behind this operation. And um, yes, we have an announcement that in um, one week, our next book will be released on our website and on drive through RPG for print on demand. And that is the fourth book in the monster series, which is this guy. So this is Monsters of the Wilderness, our biggest book yet. Over Sorry. 120 monsters in seven different wilderness regions. And it gives you a collection of magic items as well. Uh, we've, we have a, basically it's a monster collection, but it also can act as a campaign book. So in the campaign book, there's a story that you could use, which includes um, seven wizards, actually eight wizards. Um, and it gives you some of the background to our world of Mir, some of the world building and lore from that world. And we include a world of Mir map as well in here. And um, we're hoping that later this year to come out with a book about Mir as well, a complete book with all nine continents. But yeah, that's the big news next Tuesday. This book, the PDF, the soft cover, and the hardcover versions will be for sale. The uh, Kickstarter backers, who without them we would never have made this, couldn't have been, could have made this book. They have, like Shane, they could have. Um, the uh, UK backers are getting their books right now. The rest of the books are arriving um, within a week or two, hopefully, hopefully very in a few, just a few days, and then we start shipping those right away. So the Kickstarter Thanks. book should still arrive before uh, the print on demand books. And that's, uh, yeah, that's our big announcement for the next book in the series. And then the next book is. Yeah. And then the next book, actually, I can give you inside information. Oh, really? You don't know tell the guy? anybody else. Okay. Um, the Travis, uh, the artist, Travis Hansen, who's done all the art for that series. He is currently working on the cover for the next book. And um, that should be ready in, you know, a few days to a week. And um, around the time the Wilderness book goes on sale or just after that, we'll be able to announce book five. Nice. Well, I'm looking forward to it because I, I want to know more. I don't actually, I don't actually know what it is. I don't have any inside information. I just know a guy who knows a guy. <laughs> but... Uh... This week, we're talking about uh, gnomes, dragonborn, and tieflings, and I have to do it. Oh, my. Um, tieflings being one of my favorites. Uh, mm -hmm. But, of course, I've recently delved into having characters that are gnomes. And uh, I think I've played one dragonborn. Um, I can't remember what adventure it was. Um, and I didn't like it that mm -hmm. much. I, I really wanted the dragon to be more dragony. Yeah. So... I, I don't know. Maybe I just didn't play it right because I just didn't quite have a handle on it. But um, but gnomes, you know, they're cool. Yeah. So as Shane said, uh, today, gnomes, dragonborn, tieflings, we're not going to look at half orcs because we just don't like them. Actually, um, we're not going <laughs> to look at them <laughs> because um, and we're going to talk about that a bit with dragonborn and tiefling is that this new idea of having monstrous races as character races. I don't really think it works for the most part. Um, it takes away too from some of the other races. And again, it goes against the archetypes and um, it does give options, but I think sometimes, you know, tons of options are not always necessarily a good thing. Like for example, all the studies that show if you give people things to play with, the more items they have, usually the less creative they're being. So sometimes mm -hmm. more is not better. And um, no, it's so like you have to do stuff out of necessity. Like you have to, it's like, okay, I want to do this thing. And if I can't use that particular species then forget it, uh, I can't do that. So, but you I agree like that the, these monster races, like, especially in the world of mirror adventures that we've done, mm -hmm. um, having the, you know, picking those particular species, like out of the gate, it just doesn't work because everyone's scared of you because they don't know what you are, that you're not, you're not native to any region that they're familiar with. Right. And I think it just kind of defaults to um, 
you become like the the big bad monster in the middle of the night uh which kind of sucks because you're trying to like i'm trying to help you it's like no get away yeah that kind of stuff so yeah i think realistically in a lot of settings especially traditional fantasy settings that's when that's what's going to happen if a monster races around plus it's going to you know the party is now going to be a target if people are looking for them oh look for the party with the giant dragon humanoid <laughs> or maybe the person with horns sticking out of their head so um anyway let, uh, let's yeah. talk about gnomes who are the more classic of these three at least they have some lore which is a nice thing to add in so yeah, exactly. gnomes are these delightful joyful small creatures um they are creative inventive often known as tinkers um they're explorers. They also have this connection to small creatures, small beasts. Um, they're curious and um, impulsive. And some people say, oh, they're not that different than halflings. Well, actually, I, I beg to differ, uh, beg to differ if, you know, if you really want to get down to it, there's quite a lot of differences. Halflings are more about the home and they're more about um, being very pleasant and, um, Gnomes are quite different. Uh, they're more they're more in the Fey world, and um, they're, that's where they're originally from. Is actually folklore about fairies. And original gnomes are tiny little creatures, you know, like about this big. And then over time, they got a little bit they got bigger. And now in D and D, they're a little bit bigger than halflings. Um, so I actually I don't mind them being small. Even smaller would actually be kind of cool. Like I actually have like oh I'm a you know I'm. 20 uh, or 20 i'm 12 inches tall i'm one yeah foot, that's all i am like that would be kind of neat to play but um but yeah i mean i always compare them to like um the the creatures that the halflings wish they could be because they halflings are they give stout and you have uh, a couple other uh, sort of variants but mm -hmm. these ones you have like uh the sort of the regional sort of gnomes with ones that, that basically evolved into these particular uh, biomes and things like that, which I really like because you can play a, play a character that's a gnome, but if you choose it from a different area, then potentially you have new sort of tools to play with, or mm -hmm. at least a way to play the, to role play the character differently. Yeah. Yeah. I like that you, yeah, I think you're right on there. They're what kind of what some halflings maybe would like to be. Um, and so gnomes in D&D, three to four feet tall, so a bit taller than halflings. Um, slightly heavier, not much. Uh, they get a bonus of plus two to intelligence. So again, different from halflings. Um, they live to 500. Again, different from halflings. Uh, quite a lot different. So they live sort of around the same age as dwarves. Um, they're usually good in alignment. Um, their speed, again, is that factor we talk about sometimes being a bit of a con where their feet, speed is only 25 because they're so small. Um, they have dark vision, and we forgot really to address this so far. Um, I think we forgot it completely last week with the dwarves. Um, so they're one of the creatures that have da dark vision, which doesn't mean they can just see in the dark. It means that um, in dim light, they can see as if it was bright light for 60 feet. And in darkness, they can see as if it was dim light for 60 feet, and they can only see uh, the grays. They can't see colors. Um, so there is a limit to it. Some people treat it as kind of this limitless ability. They're all powerful in the dark. It's not like that. Uh, and you also have negatives towards your perception um, checks. Um, they have... Uh, gnome cunning, which are saves against magic. They have they can speak gnomish in common, of course. And then, as Shane said, there's different kinds. So the forest gnomes get a bonus of plus one to dexterity. They're the ones who can speak with small beasts. Um, they're really connected to nature and woodland settings. Rock gnomes are plus one to con. Those are the ones that are more focused on tinkering and artificers. And then there's deep gnomes, which I would consider more of a monster and maybe for NPCs. And then tinker gnomes from Dragonlance. Um, which, which I had actually, when I read the, the document with your notes, I had to go look that up again because I'm like, oh yeah, I've totally forgotten that. Like, yeah. Like yeah, nobody remember. talks about them. Well, not many people mention them. They always talk about the, the um, Kender and um, the elves and dwarves. Um, so Shane, I believe you've played 
two gnomes. I think you have one right now or two. I've played I've played two gnomes. Um if I remember correctly, the first gnome I had died. If I think I think it did. I think that character did. I can't remember how. But uh, right. the current one I'm running is uh Warren and Mouse Court, who I just thought it would be kind of funny to have Indiana Jones at three feet tall. Um yeah. and, and that kind of stuff. So uh I kind of I try to play him with swagger, but I also like I also have an addiction to <laughs> to certain traits that, the, that this character mm -hmm. has. And uh, the one of being you know, you're turning into right. a wild creature and like biting people. Right. Um, beast mode. It's not very beast mode. <laughs> which is not very Indiana Jones ish, but yeah, yeah, whatever. You can't be mm -hmm. perfect. Uh, they're fun to I gotta say he's fun to play. The fact that that um uh I've chosen to be a uh uh, a druid is, is um, a druid. I am a druid, right? Yeah, he's a druid. Yeah, your um, favorite having wild having wild shape with a character like that is kind of fun because he's this little tiny thing, and then suddenly it's like he's this large bear or whatever. Right. Why don't you tell everyone you you, you have favorites in terms of the beast you like to turn into? Yeah, this is true. My my favorite right now, which I'm trying to wean myself off of, but I failed last time we played, uh, is turning into a giant scorpion, uh, mainly because it's a bit op. Uh, because he's got, he has two claws and a, and a, and a stinger. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when you have a large creature that, you know, I really wouldn't be able to defeat on my own. At least I have a chance if I turn into something large and I don't know, I just keep going back to the scorpion. I'm sure there's something else is cool, but, uh, I did actually think of turning into a carrion crawler, but I don't think I've actually seen one so, <laughs> or if they exist in the universe, but still, right. uh, it's, it's still kind of fun. Yeah, and when you went, you were just in the Drow capital down in the underworld, and you decided to turn into a giant spider when you were in the city, and oh, because you you couldn't fit into the inn when you guys decided to try to stay there for a night, so where did you end up sleeping? Do you remember? I I, I climbed up on the roof and I and I fell asleep on the on the roof yeah. right above the room. I think. Um, yeah. Since there, there wasn't a balcony, unfortunately, I would have slept there. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, it was kind of funny actually, which is interesting that you can do that, like sleep as a creature and then you know, wake up. And I guess I'm assuming, I guess after a long rest, it would, it, you'd become yourself again, but still. Yeah. I think you're, yeah. The wild shape would be over. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, um, pros they're quirky, really, um, unique. And th that enthusiasm is, I think really fun. It's always nice to add some energy to the game, their curiosity, um, their connection to fairy lore, um, we actually, in one of our books, we have the um, lake gnome, which is more based on those original gnomes. So it's a tiny little, they're tiny little gnomes that live in uh, lakes. And um, they're really, I mean, you, there's lots of different things you could do with them, but their one main feature is that they actually um, imbue people with wisdom. Uh, however, there's a consequence is that you, you might become quite ill in this um as you absorb this knowledge this wisdom and um so this idea that fairies again have this deep knowledge um so that kind of fey lore with gnomes you could pursue having dark vision is useful speaking to speaking to beasts small beasts is really useful you know like you could ask uh simple questions about where you know the movement of monsters or characters or where an object is I think it's very useful. Hey, Mouse, did you see a guy come running through here a minute ago? Yeah, he went that way. Cool, thanks, bye. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, and you always, to get the Dungeon Master to have to play the voices of all these different beasts is always a good thing. Oh, totally. Like, <laughs> I, I, like when I turn into different creatures, I try to think of what would they sound like if I try to speak. And then yeah. my scorpion sounds like, or something weird. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's fun to play. Yeah, for sure. Cons, I think, again, the small, sometimes in a realistic campaign, you know, you can literally get tossed aside unless you've turned into a giant scorpion. Um, the slow speed can be an issue at times. Um, for me, I'm not into the whole mechanical technology connected into medieval times. Some of it I don't mind, kind of, you know, but I think too much takes away from the lore of that kind of setting. Um, I know some actually the artist in our for our books there Travis uh, once put glasses on one of the creatures one of the characters in the book and I said no like we're we're not going to have anybody with glasses and uh 
Um, I know we do have one person playing an artificer right now in our group. Um, and that, again, I think if you do it, if you just kind of, you know, if you tinker with it a little bit um, and you add some of that, I think it's fine. But too much, I think, again, takes away from the the lore and the, you know, the immersion, the immersion in that kind of world. True. I mean, and that's the thing with um, I've never played an artificer, I've never tried any tinkering stuff at all. Mm -hmm. um, the only tech I've ever run into are things like, you know, if the module that you're playing, uh, like off the shelf module, um, has stuff. And I, there's an adventure right. that I forgot which it's, it's the crash, the crashed spaceship. And, uh, you have oh, yeah. Um, I think that's Expedition like that. to the Barrier Peaks, if I yeah. remember. Yeah. 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 And that one was, uh, that actually was weird because you had to deal with stuff that these characters have never, ever seen. Yeah. And you're just kind of expected to, you know, pick up a gun and know what a gun does. Mm -hmm. And it, it's kind of like what in one of the homebrews I've done is uh, I tried to have cannons. And I kept struggling with how do you make a cannon? Because mm -hmm. cannons aren't that common, um, if, if at all. And then I thought, you know what? What if you just took like a large tube of something mm -hmm. and stuck a, a, a staff in it? And I thought, oh, a staff with that shoots, you know, X number of fireballs. That's perfect. That's a cannon. <laughs> Done. Uh, so it would be something that somebody could actually in that world go, okay, I got to find, I want to have this thing that I can aim. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, oh what am I going to shoot? Oh, well, I can shoot fireballs or any, any spell for that matter. But uh, I thought it'd be kind of, it was a, a good way to sort of try and marry the, the medieval sort of stuff into, you know, something a little more technical, but really it's just something to aim it with, I guess. But, you know. Right. Yeah. I think it's fun to just play with those things a little bit. Like you said, um, the one for me, which is sort of the closest to a gun in a way is a hand crossbow. Right. Cause you sort of, you pretty much aim it like that and it, you can have it on, on, you know, on your waist. And um, for me, the ships, instead of cannons, I have ballistae. So those heavy, large ballista. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. Gnomes, uh, lots of choices. I think they are unique. I don't think they're like halflings. Uh, there's some obvious um, connections. They're both small, but yeah. there is something very unique and they're a lot of fun, I think. Um, dragonborn. So big muscle dragon humanoid. The clan is very important to them. They're really the archetypal warrior, sort of like a Klingon in some ways. Um, they're proud. They're into mastery and being self-sufficient. Um, they get a big bonus to strength, plus two, plus one to charisma. They live to about 80, so they have quite a short life compared to many of the other uh, races. Uh, most of them are good, and again, for the game to work, that's usually how it works. They're yeah. over six feet tall and al can be almost 250 pounds. So they're just enormous. Um, they have damage, damage res resistance to whatever their draconic ancestry is. And they speak draconic in common. Um, yeah, again, like I said, they're, you know, very strong, intimidating, archetypal warrior. They have that breath weapon, um, a connection to dragons. At the same time, their breath weapon, a lot of people have complained about it because you can only use it once, really, a day. That's how it works out, too. Um, right. I think it's once a day. Let me double check that. So what's not, what a lot of people have done to make it more uh, usable is to have it, have it as a bonus action, which I think makes a lot of sense. So normally, the breath weapon, you have to do a short or long rest. So I would, I would do that. I would change it to a, a bonus action to make it much more usable. And, um, and there's not a lot of lore. Like if you look in the player's handbook and you read up on Dragonborn, it really doesn't say very much at all. It pretty much just says they're, they're a proud warrior. Um, you know, they're very intimidating. But it doesn't give you very much, and there's not a lot of Dragonborn history to go back. Like well, there was no, there were no Dragonborns in the original Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, and I just so, actually looked that up. I was curious when they started. Yeah, it is. It yeah. started in four in version. Yeah, four. and there's not a lot, there's not a lot to them. People just sort of say, well, like you said, they're dragony, and well, they need it. I think they need to add more to it to make them more interesting. 
Um, what I did well, was I. How do you expect like a dragon to like get it on with a humanoid? Like how how does that actually work? <laughs> I mean, okay, I know we've the Shrek is out there, and you know they have the, the donkey dragon thing, but right. I the way the dragons are played in in D and D, generally speaking. You have a, a whole bunch of them that really want nothing to do with you other than to kill you if you run into them. Right. And you have the other ones who also want nothing to do with you, but right. you know, they won't kill you. They'll be like, Yeah, he went that way. And by the way, don't don't kill him, just do this one thing, you know, some sort of lore gets dumped on the party and then, and then everyone leaves because they're, you know, the, the, these dragons don't want to hang out with you. It's not like they're like, Yeah, no buddies, yeah, no. But I don't know. I, I was I, I found Dragonborn weird. Like, where did they come from? Why did they come up? And, you know. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. That's why for me, I in our world of Mir, I didn't really add them very much. I didn't make a big, complex story for them. Basically, I have them as the slaves of the tieflings. And um, there's not too many of them in the world. And uh, they're kind of new arrivals as well. And then the other way I use them is I use them part of the dragon cult uh, that worships Tiamat, um, which was one of the first adventures, was the first adventure for fifth edition. I think that adventure has some really good things in it. It's just not really well organized, um, but it's a good place to start for, to get a, like a, a template for a campaign, a template for a campaign, which is one of the campaigns we're doing right now. So I think those dragonborn fit into that sort of thing but they don't really have enough lore to make them last i think um yeah they need to add more there in my opinion well i mean i i was just thinking about it after saying saying that earlier about where they come from and i just realized the entire dragonlance thing has those draconians yeah that must be where they came from like because that was like i think second edition maybe no yeah, was uh, that edition was part from. of a D and D, so like mid, I think mid eighties was when the first Dragonlance stuff came out. Yeah, um, yeah, they're somewhat similar. There's some similarities there. Um, I mean, I mean, they're the, the only reason I'm thinking about it is that they they are just humanoid dragon folk of some kind, and yeah. they're just basically painted as being you know this is the military arm of the big bad kind of thing, but um, that, it must have influenced the people at, at who was who were running D D back then uh tsr I, I guess at that point. yeah yeah <clears throat> all right so the good the other good thing about it i think is that when there is this huge gap in lore as a player who wants to be very creative now you've got a real you know you've got you know you can create your own lore around dragonborn if you want That's um cool. okay so tieflings and again this is what it says in the new player's handbook the um, fifth edition and it doesn't say much. It says that tieflings are swindlers, thieves, crime lords, suspicious, and untrustworthy. That's pretty much what it says. This explains the entire plot of the Star Wars film Solo. <laughs> Which, it does make you wonder why they would be part of an adventuring party and do anything heroic if that's who they are. So they get a plus one to intelligence, plus two to charisma, which is a big boost if you want to be, um, for example, a, sor a sorcerer. Um, they age like humans. They're usually evil. They're medium size, regular speed, so 30 feet. They have dark vision. Oh, that's the other thing we didn't talk about Dragonborn. Dragonborn don't have dark vision. And a which lot of people think that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, it totally doesn't. It totally yeah. Doesn't. So tieflings have that. They have resistance to fire damage. They know some extra spells, starting with thaumaturgy. They know common and infernal. So they have this link to um, the hell, to hell and devils, and they're this um, basic, you know, um, demi-human, half devil, half human. Um, so they're very mysterious, and they're like almost otherworldly, which I think is pretty cool. Um, on the con side, again, it's sort it's a monstrous race. Doesn't, doesn't necessarily fit. Um, they're very dark and evil, which again, why would they be a part of a heroic adventure for the most part? Um, they're, 
They're also, as we talked about Dragonborn, there's just not a lot of lore. There is, there was some, there was a book for fourth edition, a, a small booklet about them. <clears throat> but I think, again, they haven't, they haven't added too much to it. And again, I would wonder for most, unless a player is being very creative, um, <clears throat> for most of these uh, creatures, why would they be in an adventuring party? If they're evil, th thief, swindler, crime lord, <laughs> suspicious and untrustworthy. <clears throat> Well, I know that when I've played the two tieflings I've played, both times I made them sort of outcasts in there. Mm -hmm. uh, like one was was I think a like was a group on the streets kind of thing, but the other one I chose the first one I did was uh, you know mommy and daddy did a bad thing, and this is what had to happen, and now they have this offspring that is you know this thing that they 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 treated very well, but kept you know in a tower kind of thing, you know a Rapunzel sort of situation where um and that that worked fine because they they i didn't want them to be evil so i just chose not to i think what it was it was it my tiefling that collected ears or was that somebody else i can't remember that was one of your tieflings yeah i think yeah. i think that was the one that grew up on the street and basically uh became an assassin essentially and but the only thing they did is they they collected ears of of oh it was actually a small actually of halflings that's right and that was about as evil as I got was like, if I found a yeah. halfling or, you know, oh, keep that stick in a pouch, not, you know, don't say anything to the party kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that part of it kind of, those were, that's one of the times where you walk that line and it just works because you, they knew that you were, you hunted halflings. So they always kept you at bay and yeah. they were interested in having the party getting hunted down by, you know, the, the, um, you know, the family of any of half these halflings that you killed. So you actually were prevented from doing it. So, and yeah, I think, I think about style... halfway through that adventure, I think one of the other player or one of the other characters noticed. Uh, yeah. Saw they noticed your doing, collection. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And I think but, the exile yeah. idea is a great idea, which is what you did for at least one of your tieflings. Uh, it's a great idea for dragonborn or tiefling. So you have this hero from this generally monstrous race. However, you know, after you do that, again, there's just not, I think, okay, there's one campaign, there's one character. It's great. I think, you know, you look at humans and elves and dwarves and gnomes, you know, halflings, there's endless amounts of characters and character building that you can do there with all that lore. And it's just, yeah. you know, and the fact that they're heroic and the fact that they're adventurers. You know, once you get past the dragonborn and tiefling being sort of edgy, um, and and maybe the exile idea, which you know, sort of, I guess that's kind of like Dritz. I don't know that much about him, but he's a a non evil drow warrior who was a star of uh, R. A. Salvatore's books. Right. So once you get past that, you know what's left, right? Until they add some exactly. more. Exactly. And that's the thing is that they really need to add a lot more. And, and and we've gone through over the past few weeks, we've gone over these characters or sorry, these, these different races, species. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm realizing there's not a lot there. There needs to be more like there need to be more. Oh, really? like, there's, there's, there's to, the, the cat one with tabaxi or whatever it's called. Tabaxi. Yeah. Uh, is there any, are there some that I'm missing that I just can't think of? Yeah. Um, there's some extra ones that I didn't include. So yeah, there's the cat people, the tabaxi. Again, like pretty much no lore. The Aracocra, the bird people, again, there's not a lot to the background. And having a character that can fly right away, I think it's a bit of a... And don't the, does the bird race not speak common? Wasn't that a problem too? We, we had a... No, that's that something else. Happen. That is um, oh, okay. the Kenku, who oh, one of our right. players decided to play. And again, I like giving people, you know, if people want to do that choice and they have a great character, sure. So um, the problem with the Kenku is that I, maybe they didn't read what they were, but Kenkus are not supposed to speak clearly. They're supposed to speak in like chirps and all these different yeah. sort of bird noises, which would make it, again, why would you have a character who can't talk to the other character, like actually can't talk to the characters in the game? So... Yeah, so there's Aarakocra, 
um, there's tabaxi. You can, I mean, all the monstrous races now, some people have used as options, which again, I don't yeah. think really works, but like lizard folk, lizard men, um, right, right. Uh, even like goblins and orcs and bugbears and things. Again, I just don't see how, you know, I don't think that's really workable for the most part. Yeah, they just get lost in the shuffle of of what, like what's a monster and what's do. the, yeah, and what's a monster and what's a hero like, and the Yuanti, which are these like really right. powerful snake people. Um, oh, and then there's a mermaid, a merman mermaid version. There's of course a Gensai, which are these elemental creatures. That one's kind of cool. Like like we have one of those in one of our campaigns um that's the water gensai who's the artificer yeah. Yeah. uh that one that one's kind of cool um yeah they they just sort of added every possible you know you can be a frogman you can be and i i kind of have the opposite i i viewpoint in terms of i don't think again i think quality is better than quantity in this case exactly, and i think yeah. once they dropped off into tiefling and dragonborn then I don't think there's as many interesting characters as those core races. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't and that's, stop. And that's I wouldn't I think stop it comes a player. Back to the lore. Sorry, it comes back to the, it comes back to the lack of lore. I mean, yeah, that, that's. That, I mean, that, out of all of those those species you just mentioned, I could not tell you where the heck a, a kanku came from, where the snake came from, where like I have barely enough to. The only reason I know anything about tieflings is I know it's like a bargain made with a devil of some sort and it results in this offspring and i mean there's there's ways to play with that right but at the same time uh there's nothing like that for any of the other ones and like I, even i have trouble even thinking of them because i would never play them because I, it's just like yeah there's other ones there should be more and you're like no no there are more shane i'm like oh yeah those characters i've i've looked at and thought nah yeah, yeah it's too hard to play these ones because they you're right it comes back lack of lore you don't know why they're really there and then you also don't know how they would fit in any adventure where they're not. i mean i took a chance on playing a goliath and a goliath right. still stands out you know so i tried to make the goliath completely as ridiculous as possible yeah you know former stripper uh had you know was white skinned uh bright red hair you know more clown like but at least I had something to play with where I wasn't so standing out. Although I, right. I was definitely standing out, but still. Right. You had you had stuff where people could look at him and go, oh, okay, hello, sir. Uh, blah, 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 blah. You are now dancing. Okay, that's great. You know, rather than, you know, some brooding monster that's just sitting in the corner in a bar. Yeah. It does give you, like you say, it does give you, you know, rain to be really creative. At the same time, you know, the other side of not having a lot of lore is that the creature doesn't usually doesn't fit into the world. So, yeah. you know, and again, like I said, that's going to make the party a target. And you're kind of taking away from the story if you haven't chosen something that's part of the story, right? Um, yeah. Which a lot of these other creatures aren't. And, and the other one I think of, too, is that some some people want it. Well, some people have added, which uh, is a centaur. <laughs> Now, the the first problem I would say would be ladders. Like, there's so many ways where the creature it doesn't make sense, right? Like, you know, what are you gonna do in dungeons? What do you? Oh no, you're like, what happened in your adventure? Um, I just got stuck. I couldn't go up this. There was a trap door, and that was the only way out. There was a ladder, and I could I couldn't go up. So I just so my I character went home. <laughs> yeah no you can't go home you're stuck in the dungeon forever <laughs> well i mean there's definitely the uh, i mean when you think about it um uh not tolkien uh who wrote harry potter uh jk rowling jk rowling thank you um she played with with the whole idea of centaurs uh but they're like hey how's it going yeah here's the information you need i'm going <laughs> back into the forest because i don't like you <laughs> it's like and yeah. they're gone. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're fine as a monster. They're fine outside. But, you know, well, you, you we can just look at our adventure we just had, um, you know, last weekend where your party are in the dungeon of these fire giants and the fire giants had captured two centaurs and put them in the cell 
in a jail with a bunch of other prisoners. Uh, those centaurs, the two centaurs were dead like within the first couple of minutes. Yeah, because they're, they, they're I, big they targets. Fare well at all. Yeah, they don't move around <laughs> well in a dungeon. Um, yeah, so I think I, I, actually I remember thinking, oh, we should get the centaurs, and you're like, okay, so that one's dead, that one's dead. Like it happens so fast. Yeah, like, exactly. No, it's like, what's your name? Uh, my name is, you know, and they're yeah. gone. Yeah, no, they totally didn't. They don't fare well. <laughs> yeah, again, those I think those core races, which is ironic, you know, because the game began with, you know, elf was a was a class and dwarf was a class. Um. That's how the game started. And you could be, you know, you could be a fighter, magic user, you could be an elf, a dwarf, a halfling, a cleric. I think that was like the original kind of group. And they were actually classes that you could be, not just races, which they're not really races anyway. They are species. Yes, they're creatures. Especially Made up creatures when you're and a snake. <laughs> yeah. Again, the funny thing about some of the controversy about about creatures and things is that the whole game, even if you use uh, maps and miniatures and terrain, and even if you play online or whatever, the whole thing is in your mind. The whole thing is in your mind. Your imagination, you, that's what's going on. No matter what we're saying, you're imagining it in your mind. So any imaginary creature you're getting upset about is in your mind. I'm so angry with my own mind. <laughs> but the uh, the last one you have in our, in the in the in the notes is about half orcs not being suited for player characters. And I know yeah. in the past I have played half orcs at some point, but not that often. But when I have, it's mainly because I make them a barbarian. That's really about it. Yeah. But classic. But why do why do you not think that they're they're good for players? Uh, I say that once weird. again because I would group them with the monstrous races. So to me, it's more it's a great NPC because you've got this orc now who has some human characteristics. And um, now there's, you know, a lot in the original Dungeons and Dragons, a lot of those adventures, there'd be maybe a group of orcs and they'd have a half orc leader because they're brighter than the regular orcs. Again, this is a made up monster. <laughs> And um, I'm so angry about my mind. <laughs> so they, they'd have a half orc like fighter or a half orc fighter cleric or a half orc um, fighter magic user. They're, they'd be kind of like the leaders of the, you know, of these little groups of or bands of orcs. So again, I think they're more a monstrous creature. Just think about the party meeting in the tavern to start a campaign, right? And if you're in any kind of traditional fantasy world, so now you have a dwarf, an elf, some humans at your table, and you've got a half orc. Right away, again, anybody who's looking for your party, you know, oh, there's the party with the orc, the half orc. And if Big you look at half orcs, I'm sure faces. if we look in the player's handbook, they're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna say that they don't get along well with people, they're angry. I'm just gonna check here. But again, why, <laughs> why would the rest of the party? trying to accomplish something, have this creature in the party. So I bet you, and I bet you there's, <laughs> there's not going to be a lot of detail. So it says, um, they are proud. Yeah. Everybody's proud. Um, they regard, so they're again, the archetypal warrior, like the dragonborn. Um, they are tra basically says they're often traumatized because of their background. Great. Um, it's, always, it's always a good start. Yeah. Uh, again, they, and they have, you know, they're angry. They have this rage. They're, um, they're meant, I mean, just look at their abilities, menacing, right? You have proficiency in the intimidation, <laughs> in the intimidation skill. Savage attack is one of their other features. Um, they hear they hear whispers of the orc god in their dreams, <laughs> so they they play them. I did them not as, know that. That's interesting. Yeah, so they play them as these tormented souls of this dark background. And again, for me, you know, once in a while, that's you know, that's a cool kind of background. But the monstrous races, again, would they go on heroic adventures? 
And you know, if you don't like doing that and you want to do role playing adventures, role playing a half orc, how much range is there? Right? It's like Rambo. Well, then we, then we really need to talk about kobolds. I mean, come on, those are. <laughs> <laughs> Kobolds, I didn't even know uh, the reason happened. I brought that up fair yeah. listeners, uh, yeah. is that there we had this conversation uh, a year or so ago about, about somebody yeah. talking about kobolds and you're like no 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 way <laughs> like you reacted so strongly and I'm like okay so kobolds are no <laughs> yeah they're out yeah there's a few I mean in every game there's a few creatures that DMs gravitate towards and ones they're not really that into using so as far as the humanoids for me it's always been about orcs goblins and um lizard men and the ones for me that don't really make a lot of sense are gnolls like hyena creature humanoid and even though they're very traditional they're, they're part of the original adventures for me uh, um well, and then that, uh for for fur blow, blow what are they called fur balls fur balls yeah those are original too are they um are they well not in the very <laughs> beginning they came in in monster manual 2 okay. so yeah a little bit later into advanced dungeons and dragons and there's another one that some people have made into player characters um yeah, and then yeah, kobolds for me. If if you have orcs and goblins, why do you need kobolds? And if you want a creature that's really connected to dragons, like kobolds are, that's what lizard men are. Lizard men are have this deep connection to black dragons and dragons, and they speak draconic and um, yeah. And it, but everybody's got their different uh, tastes that they're into. Um, yeah. Well, if they can find adventures to play them in, then have at it. But, that's right uh, <laughs> at the but game on that note it's just a game uh but anyway uh so that uh, we'll, we'll wrap it there because we've been gone for quite some time but next week uh we're going to be talking about classes now not species classes and uh we're going to start with uh probably the most classic of them all which are fighters so that's right which i think i've played the least if i remember correctly oh really all the characters i played i i think primarily well as a kid the whole uh multi-classing thing uh all that kind of stuff yeah so wow but maybe maybe that should be my next character all right and we'll uh, we'll look a little bit at this book we'll also do uh a deep dive for one of the shows but we'll look a little bit at that next week because it'll be on sale uh that day on next tuesday very cool. Well, thank you all for watching, listening, following, whatever you're doing. Make sure to tell people about the show. And uh, Andrew, again, thank you again for, thank you, man. for doing this. Bye, everybody. Later. Later.